home sweet home for a Saturday night under the MTP tarp. Kit unloaded there, sleep kit, other bits and bobs, some food. My little kitchen table. Later on, I'm going to have a bit of a midnight feast with some wild boar goulash, prunes, and brandy savoured with some vegetable. Hi, it's Pete, Mind Wise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors, and it's a Sunday morning at the beginning of June 2016. I was out all day yesterday uh, paddling on the rivers, doing a bit of sightseeing, and uh, just having a nice, chillax time out on the waters. But sadly, without my faithful 16 and a half year, well more than that, more than 16 and a half years loyal, faithful safari companion, safari dog, who can no longer be with me. But life goes on, carpe diem, seize the day and all that, so for the first time out solo without my safari companion, I took the leap, took out the Maverick Explorer, and uh, came out for just over 24 hours. By the end of today, it will be just over that. Some of the kit I brought with me, some I knew that I probably wasn't going to use, but brought anyway. Just a good old cheapo folding saw, heavy duty gloves, because I've got some wood procuring to do later on. Tacto, tactical gloves for paddling, just some basic bits and bobs, machete if I need to clear any of the ground. 
Just my old faithful kit bag there, which carried the food and water. And then my dry bag there, just sort of folded up with just a few bits and bobs. That's my sleep kit. A few clean change of clothes, because uh, I did get hot and sweaty yesterday. So it was nice to have a freshen up with the old wet wipes and then uh, don a nice clean t-shirt later on in the evening. And talking of clothes, a layer system. I improvised uh, late last night. I didn't bring a sleeping bag because I uh, just planned on putting the old softy jacket over. Just with t-shirt that I had underneath this fleece and then just put the softy jacket. But I didn't bring a sleeping bag or softy trousers. So what I did, my legs got, it wasn't really cold last night. My legs just got a little bit nippy. So what I did, I just improvised with my sort of lightweight microfiber towel. Doubled that up, placed it over the lower part of my legs, put my waterproof jacket, and uh, that thermally clad me to feel comfortable without actually having to use a sleeping bag. So that was okay. Plus for a bit of extra thermal warmth, because a lot of body heat can be actually lost through your head, especially if you've got no hair like me. <laughs> because I utilized the old buff, but also pulled it over my ears just so that no creepy crawlies could get in. Of course they can go up your nose or if your mouth is open when you're asleep but hopefully that will sort of choke you to wake and then spit out anything that might have crawled in any other orifice. But also with the old buff as well because now the season during the early summer now it gets lighter much earlier in the morning between four to five o'clock. You know if you wake up and the light disturbs you then just pull that over and uh, that does the job as well. Also improvised with my pillow head support system. I like to have my sort of head, I don't like to be too flat, I like to have a little bit of an angle. So I had the old inflatable pillow, the bolster cushion which actually goes underneath the canoe seat which helps raise it up a little bit and then the floor pad to sit on the floor on the ground but also my knee pads. So I thought what I'd do is I'll use those as a little bit of a wedge, place that on top place that on top and because of the nature of the material that all these things are made out of, synthetic and rubbery, it tended to grip so it didn't slide. So that kept nice and firm, keeping that angle as you can see. I could have used me PFD or some stuff that was in my kit bag and used that as a pillow but the sort of nature of this material is going to be sliding around and you have bits moving about so uh, utilising what I did for the pillow headrest worked much better than if I'd improvised with some other stuff. So everything within sleeping last night was sort of improvised and plus as well I can actually have it under my shoulders a bit more so part of my upper sort of chest and shoulders can be elevated and nothing's actually slipping out from underneath me then going back to the horizontal so all good stuff. I've recently acquired one of these little stick single leg tables which is absolutely brilliant. I mean it's such a simple device but I've had this now for about six weeks and it's absolutely brilliant for one person or a couple of people but if you're sitting and you've got something on sort of like sitting level it's really handy. So I'm going to utilize some of that stuff now and uh, make a brew some scrambled eggs and bread. But before I actually start to make something to eat, I'll just quickly show you some sort of dribs and drabs of uh, wet wipes that I've had left over. So that's some insect repellent wipes. I've not had to use those. Tea tree with a little bit of a sort of antibacterial sort of like to wipe your hands and all over body wipe. I find these ones, this ain't product placement. I just find these huggies are really thick and strong and then some kitchen towel for normal sundry use. That's really a sort of wash system. Although I do have a very small wash kit about the size of my hand which has got a flannel, uh, some wash gel, toothpaste and brush. Also what I decided to do was um, use the remnants that you normally get left over in these butane gas containers. You take one with you, so like that as a unit and it's full and new so you know it's going to last you for a good few days. But <laughs> there's dribs and drabs so there must have been about, I don't know, about 20% left in that one which is now empty. 
there was about again about a quarter left in that that's um, a little bit left maybe I can get a brew out of that and then a little bit more in that so hopefully by the end of today I'll have used up all the dribs and drabs of uh, the butane gas containers and it wasn't a problem because I actually put them in my kit bag and purposely actually brought them out to use them but I always bring with me regardless of whatever cook system I've got the old hexi stove so if anything fails on this or gets broken or anything unpredictable I've always got this to fall back on especially if I don't want to actually be lighting a campfire which I actually didn't want to do this weekend I had the RAV power that little camo lantern there you've seen me use that a number of times I used that last night I had it hanging from up there and it really had some nice sort of resonant light without sort of like flood light in the whole place so you could actually see everything so it was just a nice subtle light but I've got it at the moment recharging my phone because I was uploading some stuff to social media some pictures and bits and bobs so uh, putting that on charge so that's a two-in-one with that lantern then my food box just an MRE pack and some other MRE here but tinned stuff I actually sourced myself finally he's wrapped rice in a tin so that's long life and also octopus and spicy sauce so I'll probably have that as a meal maybe later on and other bits of sundries inside and hexi stove I've actually got on the go <clears throat> I normally only use half a block if I know I'm going to do just about just under a litre because even a whole block would still do the same thing and by the time that gets to boil if I do need to add a little bit more I can just break another bit off so I'm actually saving on hexi stove blocks so that should actually come to the boil in a moment I've got some flatbread to actually heat up in the mess tin which has got some brew stuff and some biscuits there at the moment some butter and then I've got the two eggs in there so what I'm thinking of doing I think I might just sort of do some fried bread in there because I didn't bring the toaster with me and then once that's done I'll just put it aside on the lid as a plate and then scramble up the two eggs in there on there and get some brunchy breakfast down my throat right so kettle's boiled the water that was about a block and a quarter about three quarters of a block did that so I'll just leave that there for a while but what I did I melted some butter and then also put the wind guard around the butane gas stove because uh, it will use less fuel plus the flame will get directly underneath rather than sort of blowing off to the side because it was sort of blowing this way so it's not going to get the direct heat so that wind guard's doing its job but what I did I melted some butter and then put some uh, rapeseed oil in there and uh, as it started to melt and get warm the first one I basted so that's got some uh, butter and oil on it and then the oil that was left and butter that was left in there this one's sort of like just frying up as I say that one was so that the first one which obviously that was didn't soak up all the butter and oil and then left the pan dry so this is still just sort of like frying up a little bit well I decided actually with any oil and butter that's left over I'm actually going to fry the eggs and then place them on top put them on there and then put them in there <laughs> so the first one's done now ready for the second one You have to keep moving it around so that it doesn't get scorched just on the centre because obviously the flame is central to the mess tin. So sort of like just moving it around distributes the flame to sort of cook it evenly. But that's really smelling nice. Two flatbreads done. And now just doing the eggs just on the low heat. So there should be just about enough gas I reckon to do these eggs and maybe just a little bit left over nearly cooked through just gently again moving them around so you don't get a high heat point just in one spot brunch is served cheers everybody first brew of the day now let's chuck that down my throat yummy Okay, so I've wiped the majority of the residue, virtually all of it, off of the lid, obviously, which was the box that I used as my plate, the mess tin that I did the eggs and the bread in, and the knife, fork and spoon. Just with these bits of tissue, I actually got a small, they're quite handy actually, kitchen rolls folded in there. But these were from uh, 
uh, an army, American army ration pack that came with their kit. So I've just wiped off all the residue, put it in the rubbish bag. What I tend to do, and I've mentioned this before as well, this is just under a litre. And you can see my drink mug is about 450 to 500 millilitres, so it's just under half a litre. So the kettle's got about 0.3 to 0.4 of a litre of warm water left which I'll pour into there and rinse that and then pour that into there rinse that and then um, I can then just put the stuff away in a plastic bag because with my planned eating um, routine since being out yesterday was not actually going to use these again so it's just basically they don't have to be hygienically clean because I'm not actually going to use them again I will probably do a brew with that later and then of course I've got my cold food to eat later on but that's just what I've included before in other videos when I've been wild camping just to actually take this home and uh, do the washing up when I get back to terra firma bricks and mortar Okay, before I finish for the day, um, just a quick update on the Maverick Explorer canoe. So it's got nothing to do with the actual process of the um, Maverick Explorer inflatable canoe going into production or anything like that. It's mainly due to unexpected personal circumstances that have arisen, uh, other obligations in my life that have actually had to override. And over the past nearly a month or so, I've had to put the canoe on hold. Uh, but it's going to be going into production very soon, once I've got other obligations out of the way. I could have rushed it, I could have had a whole batch of canoes ready now uh, to go on the market for people that have been very interested, shown their interest and let me know. Uh, my apologies for the delay and not getting back to people at the present time due to, as I say, these unexpected circumstances that have arisen. But the price would have been higher because there's still just a couple more final things to do with the courier and transit once they're all manufactured. Now that sets a precedent. Once that's established, uh, that becomes obviously all the expenditure besides the manufacture of each canoe actually becomes included in the price. Now if I rushed it and went for the first offer that was given to me, um, it would have made it more expensive. So with the transport and courier, I'm going for the final deal now and it's going to greatly reduce the overall retail price of the canoe because I've actually stood my ground waiting to get the right deal for the courier transit. So I've getting lots of feedback from people saying, come on, when you get in the canoe, you know, we want it before the season. Hopefully I'm going to get them ready so they'll be ready to go on the market while the summer and fair clement weather is in place. For those of you that have been following the previous videos when I started to feature the canoe, how and why I got it made, etc. There's some extra features that are actually going to be um, included with it, which will be straps with foot support. So when you sit in the seat and your knees are bent, you've got something to place your feet. If you haven't got kit and bags like I had when I paddled around all day yesterday with my kit loaded in the canoe. I'm also going to get the floor just slightly narrow by about just under two inches because it creates an overall in ratio with the shape and size of the canoe a much better streamline and tracking when it's actually in the water. So for those of you that have been following the previous videos with the whole spec, I'm not going to go into it now. If, you have, if this is the first time you've actually come across it and thought, oh, what's Pete Mindwise Man aka Maverick It Doors up to? with making a canoe, uh, go into the previous videos which actually feature the spec, the construction of it. As I say, this is not a toy. This is not your um, low standard PVC that has to be protected by a nylon canvas hull because the PVC bladder isn't strong enough to hold its own. At the end of the day, you get what you pay for. And this is professional standard quality. All the materials and structure would actually be used if it was a commercial company actually utilising this type of canoe for activities that the public to actually be involved with. The transom bench over there, which has been featured before, slides through these two loops, one here and one here, so you can have two people transom bench paddling. I'm also going to get an extra one fitted in the middle, so if you're on your own, it's equally distributed and you can sit in the middle. Also, transom bench paddling. 
as I've said before, I'm not given a price right now because it's not good practice. Um, but if you want to check out, this is not your average play leisure canoe. This is a very high standard constructed multi-purpose, multi-activity canoe. It's got a drop stitch floor which is really solid. You could actually literally go surfing. But I will say this Desitex PVC chamber is much thicker than the average same type of comparable canoe out on the market but it's very very strong and thick. A lot of other canoes are either up to 0.0.7 to 0.9 this is 1.1 so not only is it a better quality um, but it's going to be far below the price of a comparable canoe. As featured in the previous videos with my Maverick Explorer, you've got all the other kit, you've got two sets of paddles, you've got the transom benches, you've got all the multi D rings, you've got the tug ropes, multi D rings for the seats. Seats can go in multiple different positions where you're sitting one, two or three people, which the maximum load can take. Also D rings at the side to fix kit as well, multiple all round and tug ropes as well. And this is the only canoe of its kind which has got tug ropes if you want to call it 360 degrees all the way round besides the two handles. So it's just a quick additional update as well because of the inquiries I've been getting um, but as I say a few things have been put on hold because of uh, other personal circumstances that took precedent. Exactly what the retail price is going to be which is going to be well below comparable canoes and with all the kit there's going to be nothing else like it on the market and I'm saying it myself but it's the truth. So um, just a quick update on it to add to this uh, bit of an MTP tarp wild camp, first solo one in many many years without me little beloved safari dog but there you go that's life. Better to have had those 16 and a half years and maybe have this sort of little bit of grief afterwards and a sort of sadness than maybe you've never had those experiences at all that's my philosophy on it anyway so <laughs> but anyway she's um, her memory stays with me wherever I go the funny thing is, I still keep expecting her to run up the stairs when I open my kit cupboard upstairs before packing everything. She used to hear the things rattling on the little um, support bars inside where I had sort of like knives and all bits and pieces hanging. And uh, even now when I sort of open that door to get kit out and go out or just sort of check my stuff, I keep expecting these four paddy paws to come rumbling up the stairs, wagging her tail. But um, alas, no. But there you go. That's life. So I was just sorting through some of the kit and um, I'm going to get ready to pack away in a moment and load the old canoe up and get it out on them thar waters. Okay, it's coming up to 8 o'clock in the evening. I've just loaded the canoe, all nice and fast and the kit in and ready to shoot in the water. You can see I've got the trolley here which I carry the canoe on once it's deflated like a suitcase. You can see the bungees hooked into these eyelets. I'm getting another one fitted here and another one in the centre and then one either side. Not incorporating the tug ropes but just separate so there's a whole permutation of fixing on this little splash skirt. And then as you can see uh, expanding. You don't want to drop your paddle in the water especially if it's a non-floating one. And you can see me food rucksack with other bits and pieces. So these D-rings are nice and big because you can see that you can actually thread like the other side here. You can actually put the hook of the bungee straight through it and then thread it round as I've got here. And that's going to be nice and strong. And then bungee coming over this other kit bag which has got my sleep dry kit, sorry my dry bag in there and also shelter kit and what have you.
there and also shelter kit and what have you and they just loop through there and then onto here so that's the horizontal although this didn't this isn't fixing anything you get the idea of it so when I shoot it in the water none of this kit's going to get disturbed so this video hasn't been too long it's just sort of sharing the time out for this weekend first time solo as I said for many years so yeah it was good to break the ice and uh, just come out and uh, clear your head and just relax on the water yeah clear your head on the waters which is like a second home to me really so plus as well just a little bit of an update on the canoe and keep everyone posted so on that note I will say as always thanks for watching really appreciate your interest and catch you in another video soon cheers take care